program known as Eric Chisenhall expressed itself and went live on September 17, 1981. And around the age of five years, little Eric became self-aware. I feel like I was a pretty lucid child. I have distinct memories of experiencing moments of total awareness before the age of six. I remember feeling paralyzed under the concept of now. Is now now? Is this happening now? What is now? What is real? Is this real life? There were moments I sank into a certain abysmal introspection trying to fully realize the notion of who or what I am. Is this going to be forever? When does a child become self-aware? They go about their days hearing and speaking, touching and interacting, but are they fully conscious? I carried this existential predisposition into my teenage years and channeled it through savage drug abuse. My analytical nature required an over-enthusiasm for hallucinogens especially. I've said before that you can take a drug that will expand your consciousness for just one night, but when you come down, your consciousness will restrict back to baseline leaving you with just a surreal and hazy recollection of how it was, what you were thinking, what you were seeing, or you can truly expand your consciousness naturally and live there on a permanent basis. So one night when I was 13, I believe I saw life for what it truly is, a digital computer simulation, a pixelated virtual reality rendering made to represent physical reality. every known drug passing through Richmond into my system. I started out getting it however I could with generic trips like nitrous oxide and drinking whole bottles of cough medicine for the dextromethorphan. I took lysergic acid. I ate an ocean of ecstasy pills and similar pathogens and entheogens like 2CI, 2CB, mephedrone, AMT, 5-MeO-DIPT, dimethyltryptamine, and other unknown research chemicals. I ingested ketamine and psilocybe mushrooms, smoked weed, opium, vincyclidine, and salvia divinorum. Along this road, I also got hung up on a host of pharmaceuticals and addictive street drugs that offer no insight whatsoever. These chemicals are just about feeling good and stimulate the most primal part of our brain responsible for fight or flight behavior. And this is where addiction comes from. The addict does the reprehensible things he does to get high because for him, it's survival. This is where I divide drugs into two categories, mind expanders or soul crushers, and you know which ones are which right away. The one thing that I regret doing the most during that time I've left off the list because it's not a drug, it's more of a behavior. When I was 13, a kid at school from one of the bad neighborhoods made the suggestion that maybe I go huff gas sometime. So when I got home that day, I did. Before I'd ever even smoked weed, I was intentionally hyperventilating into a gas tank nozzle in my garage on a weekly basis. I will honestly say that there is nothing more desperate, reckless, and self-destructive than the act of recreational inhalant abuse. It is not a human requirement. My prepubescent friends and I were having a sleepover at a friend's house, the kind we'd stay up all night watching horror movies, except I was outside with my friend's older brother teaching him to inhale gas fumes. We went in five to ten minute intervals for a period of a few hours at the time in between huffs to trip out, come down, and huff again. But one of those intervals went a little long, and that's when the world went a little weirder than usual. I remember the sound of the huffing. 
a cold, hollow, metallic reverberating breath splintering into sharp laser howls, climbing in octaves and collapsing into phrases of robotic human voices, all duplicating, echoing, and echoing, and dissipating into air. But then there was the spiral. I don't know if I looked up to see it, but the spiral became me. Blue and yellow, orange, green. Then... Pitch black. Dark, empty template. Negative space, devoid of lighter mass. There was no vision. No eyes, head, arms, legs, body. I wasn't seeing. It just was. Then... The symbol. A curved rectangle. Three oblong forms stamped in the center. It sat. Blinking, 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 blinking. The symbol darted off, replicating itself as it went through the empty black panel from bottom left to farthest right, then jumped up in front of itself, then shot off, dragging itself behind to the farthest left to jump up to dart right again. Always replicating as it went. It did this for eternity. All the while, the cacophony of electrical pulses rises and plunges in the hellish symphony of screeching digital dissonance. I am lost. I become aware that I am the symbol. I am aware of the fact that I am creating the world. I did this for eternity. I had almost filled the panel up to the middle point with replicas of myself when I made aware of a voice. Echoing and duplicating and buzzing and echoing and duplicating and buzzing. I'm familiar with the fact that my friend's brother has started his own replication in the same pattern that started from the top and met me in the middle. And when that page was done, we started over. We did this for eternity. Eastern philosophies have stated that life is an illusion for thousands of years, and it is. Science is now mirroring some spiritual ideas in many ways. We know that a physical existence can't be genuine because simply nothing is actually solid. How can it be when something that one may refer to as solid is made of building blocks that themselves are almost nothing but empty space? Atoms made of a subatomic nucleus orbited by three other subatomic particles, proton, electron, neutron. And between these particles, there is nothing, just negative space. But wood knocks when you strike it. Why? Matter is merely energy, as everything is. I believe energy and consciousness are the only truth in this reality. Energy is consciousness. Spirit is energy is consciousness. Our spirits are all that truly exists. Spirit, biofield, aura, soul, When you look at a piece of wood, a pair of socks, a ceramic toilet, its true state is a frequency-specific energetic vibration, waves of pure energy, waves of information. Light and energy are fields of information, lines of computer code that our brains, our processors, decode and translate into a solid material world as if it was anything but. Our bodies are an interface between energy info and our brain processors. The computer is taking vibrational information encoded with photons of light and transferring it into electrical info passed to the brain. The brain then decodes the information into an illusory, holographic, three-dimensional world that appears solid. But it's a construct. We are a biological computer program subconsciously reading and interpreting lines of computer code disguised as life. Our bodies are a decoded holographic projection of our own personal energy fields, an electromagnetic field that can be scientifically measured by tech instruments and even photographed. Quantum mechanics is essentially the display of waves of information and potentiality, potential protons, electrons, and neutrons, an abstract ethereal canvas of self-aware consciousness vibrating and fluctuating frequency waves which give way to the particles, the particles to atoms, the atoms to molecules, the molecules to cells. I would like to submit another example to reiterate my point in the form of the wave-particle paradox of quantum physics, also called the double slit test. Physicists have been perplexed for years at the fact that a particle or a quantic entity exhibits behavior either like a particle or like a wave, and that they even exist at the same time. Even nuttier, the deciding factor on whether you're dealing with either a wave or a particle depends upon whether you're watching or not. Yikes. If there is an observer, energy will appear as a particle, but when no one is watching, it will behave like a waveform. Because, ah, when no one is around to view the particle and decode it, as they will by merely being present, it exists in its pure form, a wave of energy, 
A wave, particle, energy, or hologram are different expressions of the same form, information, just as water, ice, and steam are different forms of H2O. If physical reality only exists when it is being observed, then we are here present in our bodies to observe and realize physicality. A neuroscientist and neuroanatomist named Jill Bolte Taylor once had a stroke in her left brain and stayed conscious through the ordeal. She remembers at one point looking down at her hands and could no longer decipher where she ended and the rest of the room began. She became aware that there was no distinction between any of it. And I looked down at my arm and I realized that I can no longer define the boundaries of my body. I can't define where I begin and where I end. Although she was swimming in euphoria, her cognitive senses did eventually kick in and informed her that something was actually wrong. And she got the idea to call her office for help. It took around 45 minutes to read the numbers on a business card. All she could see were pixels. Pixels. Then when she was able to feel around the keypad of her phone to finally dial the correct numbers, the voice on the other end was expressed in undecipherable primitive pulsations. When she tried to speak back, her own voice expressed itself the same way. And this is because the left brain containing the language center was no longer decoding these frequencies due to the hemorrhage. Nirvana. I found Nirvana. I remember thinking there's no way I would ever be able to squeeze the enormousness of myself back inside this tiny little body. But then I realized, but I'm still alive. I'm still alive, and I have found nirvana. And, and if I have found nirvana and I'm still alive, then everyone who is alive can find nirvana. And I pictured a world filled with beautiful, peaceful, compassionate, loving people who knew that they could come to this space at any time and that they could purposely choose to step to the right of their left hemispheres and find this peace. And find this peace. And find this peace. Gas fumes actually contain no psychoactive material. The act of huffing is simply just starving the brain of oxygen. Possibly much of my brain was inactive that night, revealing the true nature of the matrix. I realize now that the black panel of my gas trip was a computer monitor, and the blinking symbol, a cursor, writing code for the universe. I've always felt like I died a little that night. I must tell you about the time I smoked salvia divinorum, a mischievous and fiendish growth of nature indigenous to South America. Most drugs simply change your surroundings, albeit drastically, but your feet are still planted on the ground. Then there are two drugs I know of personally that actually take you somewhere, where nothing is recognizable. Salvia and dimethyltryptamine. DMT. By the time I exhaled the first hit of salvia, it had already taken hold. I became a part of the ground, the table, the wall surrounding me. I simply cannot describe this experience in great detail or even in human words. It was simply too chaotic. Although, I can tell you what I was told I did. Apparently I walked straight out of the door that leads to my garage completely ignoring the six stairs leading down to the concrete floor. It was like a scene out of Looney Tunes when the character continues to walk through midair before realizing there is nothing below their feet. Then, zip! I do remember wading in concrete up to my waist, being fused with it, no legs. I remember trying to pull myself out of the concrete sea, and I remember the pixels, pixels everywhere. I had been squared. They tell me I was proclaiming in a sort of desperate plea. Bad trip! Bad trip! Notice the double meaning? And this was the only English I spoke the entire experience. I clawed my way up the stairs, locked arms around a friend's ankles, and began shouting phrases not of nonsensical gibberish, but sounding more like a distinct ancient tongue. When faces and objects began to come to focus again, it looked like I may just be trapped in the fucking Nintendo game Duck Hunt. I'll never forget the pixels. The digital blocky components were everything. I've experienced blocky effects on dextromethorphan, but no one should have to deal with living inside an 8-bit video game from the early 80s. Not long ago, I heard the effects of salvia on the brain described as mimicking a tiny stroke. 
That's fucked up. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it, Phil. Are you alright, Phil? Holy fuck. Dude, I hope he's alright. Dude, he's all tensed up, dude. What's wrong with Shrippy, dude? Just salvia, dude. Salvia, dude. Salvia, dude. Salvia, dude. Now it all makes sense. Science is now saying that it's all too apparent that the universe, and we along with it, seem to be holographic in nature. Dr. S. James Gates has discovered that deep within the equations used to describe the cosmos are a very specific pattern of ones and zeros, like binary code, computer language. More specifically, he has found doubly, even self-dual, linear binary error correcting block codes, and this is just a nerdy way of naming codes that are used to correct errors in computer transmissions, like what can be found in search engines, search engines, that retrieve information. Life is an illusion within a world that is illusion, inhabited by beings blinded by illusion, being fed narratives of illusion from the television, selling illusions to beings who need illusions so they can have a break from their illusion. It's not real, and it's not that serious. We're stuck in it, so play with it. Our illusion may be a construct, but it is totally pliable. Time is the most detrimental illusion of them all. We must wake up on time, get to work on time, pay bills on time. Time finally kills us. I don't think we should know our own birthdays or celebrate them. Maybe the Jehovah's Witnesses have the right idea. You're counting down your own death. Time is really only a sequence of events. In the quantum and the spirit world, past, present, and future are all existing together simultaneously. Everything can be more closely described as happening in what can be considered a concept of like now. Everything everywhere all happening at once. You're a child and adult at the same time. An infant and elderly. Not born yet, and already dead, and already dead, and already dead, and already dead. And this last part is where I think the higher self comes in. Our spirits are simultaneously here with us on Earth, and also on the other side, waiting to welcome us back home and be reunited with ourselves, with God. We are collectively God, the Source, the Prime Creator. We are spirits in a higher realm, anchored here by our biocomputers. We are multidimensional beings, omnipresent like the Source. We've just been restricted under a vibrational ceiling. So are we being purposefully enslaved in this matrix? It's very apparent that our controllers on this earth have been waging war against our own consciousness for some time, via the food, water, medicine, and air. They're worried about our eventual enlightenment and have put certain agendas in place to combat free thought. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. So have we been uplinked into a virtual simulation by some higher malevolent force? Maybe our spirits have been hijacked by dark overlords and injected into these cumbersome, uncomfortable flesh suits full of suffering. Maybe it's the Archons. Maybe an afterlife is another illusion because our true existence is supposed to be a reality close to what we think heaven is. So there is no afterlife. What we think is happening when we die is really just escaping the prison. And that's the real world. Are we imprisoned by thousands of prison cells? that make up our body? Or is this very numerical program just the way Prime Creator expresses a 3D reality? Mathematics and spirals can be found in all nature in the cosmos. Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio, Mandelbrot set into fractal geometry. It's even in us. It's in our brains, heart ventricles, everything. Maybe we are biological computers powered by divine electricity. What makes our construct real? Only our belief in it. If we were able to truly convince ourselves that none of this was real, truly convince, collectively, because we are all just creating our own and each other's realities together and subconsciously, energetically agreeing to the terms of our construct, we should be able to put fists through metal, defy death, fly, or even shed physicality altogether and realize ourselves as infinite beings of pure light. I gave an e-pill of high quality to a girl who had never caught a buzz on any substance before in her life, and nothing happened. I took the same pills and rolled very hard, but she had no reference point, nothing to expect from the drug, and it did not affect her in any way. I was perplexed at the time, but she didn't believe it 
After all, that pill essentially only contained encoded information, and she didn't have the energetic understanding to decode the pill for her brain to translate into a psychoactive experience. So how do we break the coded matrix? Stop believing in it. Only know that you are infinite and limitation is an illusion. Research and study spiritual principles, not belief systems. Then when messages of spirit ring true to you, believe that. Know it. Never falter. The spirit is the only truth. Meditate and focus on love. Imagine that white burning star in your heart and send it into the world. Open your heart chakra and let its emerald green radiance enclose around you and protect you from negative influence. Stay guarded but practice compassion. The spirit is stronger than the matrix. It can never break you if you stay in the heart.